how to make money buying and selling cryptocurrency. In this video, I'm going to share with you some strategies that are just crushing it for some of our top folks in the community. And specifically, I'm going to share with you their strategies, how they trade and what they do. Stay tuned. <laughs> So this is an exciting interview. This is probably my favorite because I have so much evidence of people that are doing trading with algorithms and just extraordinary strategies. And a lot of them are just making them up. We love this kind of millennial group. You know, as Kelly's going to share, I'm going to interview him again. So Kelly is my expert in the stock market and in cryptocurrencies. I'm going to bring him into an interview and we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about making real money. We're going to talk about the trading of making real money, what coins to trade, how is it actually working to buy and sell and what he believes and understands the banking world's going to be doing with this. It's going to be an interesting insight. So let's go jump over to that interview and we'll be right back. So welcome back, Kelly. We are back here on our YouTube channel talking about cryptocurrencies. I'm back with Kelly Korshak and we are talking about specifically how to make money buying and selling cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of people who are becoming trading millionaires. So Kelly, welcome back. Good to be back. So is this like a real thing? I mean, you know, it's interesting, the millennials and Gen Zs, right, who have been gaming their whole upbringing, find this fun novelty when it's really serious money. Well, very much so. I mean, those dollars, even if you needed dollars at some point to buy a cryptocurrency, so that becomes very real once you start owning it and trading and in particular, very and so, real. So how would someone begin? They want to start trading. Where would you, you know, what coins, what strategies would you uh, offer them as an expert? To make money in the trading of Bitcoin requires someone that is really observing the market on a very consistent basis. So there are a lot of traders out there. And I think the first thing to do is identify who's really trading these uh, coins. Well, first of all, the most heavily traded coin, again, is Bitcoin, followed by Ethereum and then Litecoin, again, the three most liquid of the cryptocurrencies. The reason people trade them is because the bid offer, the price you get in at, is very close to the price you see on a screen. So if they say Bitcoin is $63,537, that means there's some person that's bidding maybe a little, a couple of dollars less than that and a couple of dollars above that. It means it's a very liquid market with a tight bid offer spread. Other coins have much larger bid offer spreads, which means you don't know if you're buying something that if it's a relative value is fair because the spread is so large. So first of all, if you're going to trade it, you're going to trade it the ones that have the tightest bid offer spread. Bitcoin is the number one. Second of all, notice that the people that trade it are generally in their 20s and 30s and sometimes 40s. People that are older, like myself, won't, well, I trade it, but there's most people my age that buy it, look at it as a store of value, very much like they own gold. So those people are not your competitors when you're trading coins. Remember, your competitor is a very young, impatient person. <laughs> People that are impatient create a lot of movement and volatility around a market. And that's why we see such volatility of Bitcoin or Ethereum and any cryptocurrency for that matter. Yep. So knowing that that's who you're trading against, recognize you must be very nimble and recognize that another thing is you never go short the currency. It's just a buy. There are ways nowadays to short a cryptocurrency, but it's very difficult to do so. And you need a great deal of cash in order to do it. Why? So explain that. Explain that further. Because in order to short sell a cryptocurrency, someone must lend it to you first. And where do you, there's no offerings like a broker dealer like in a stock where they'll say, hey, you know what? I'll lend out my AT&T because I'm not using it. I'm never going to sell it. I'll lend it out and make some interest on it. Mm -hmm. So there's no broker dealers out there to be able to offer that opportunity. However, that's changing and the, there will be other ways to short this efficiently down the line. But put that aside, the best way to do it, of course, is from the long side especially since we think the long side is likely going to be the secular event that will occur in the future. In other words, we all basically 
the mindset of myself and I think most younger people is that the coin will go higher. So therefore, the biggest error would be to go short it because your basic belief is that it should go higher. So therefore, play it from the long side. So if you're enjoying this interview, I want you to comment right now. Yes or no, have you been trading any digital currencies and which ones? Let's get in a conversation about what you're doing. And if you're on the other side saying, whoa, Laurel and Kelly, I have no idea what you're talking about us, let us know that. The more we engage, the more comments, the better. Back to the interview. A simple way of doing to manage trading is knowing that people are impatient is recognize that if you put on, try to always buy a dip for one. Which is avidly watching the market. You must be actively watching the market. So you want to try to buy something that appears cheaper, mm -hmm. but be very nimble to get out if it appreciates. But remember, these things are moving five and 6% every two or three days. So a five or 6% move in a cryptocurrency can translate into a great deal of money, especially if you were to be buying futures, because now the futures market exists in this as well. And that's probably the best way to capitalize on it if you're savvy, because in futures, you don't have to, you can put up a very small amount of money and invest in a very large way. So that would be buying the dip is one strategy, knowing that at some point there will always be a demand somewhere, even if it's less than the price you paid for. The other way to tactically trade these currencies is to buy momentum but sell the first sign of weakness. We, for example, at Flip have developed a model that does just that. It's a model that will buy momentum and sell the first sign of weakness. So we saw, for example, recently, our strategy put on a series of trades where people were chopped up for about two weeks. Recently, we put on where it means they lost because we would buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it, all marginal losers. But then finally, after about two weeks, we put on a very a good trade, that actually made up for all of those little losers and then sold, by the way, today. So it was today, by the way, just to note, it's 10-21, October 21st of 2021. We had a fall, which was the first sign of weakness, and we got out, but we held a trade for over $9,000, which is about 20% of the value of the currency. Mm -hmm. So the buying momentum is another strategy, but you must be nimble, you must be watching, and you must sell the first sign of weakness. If you're not a computer, you must have your eyes on the screen to navigate that kind of a market. But there is a tremendous amount of money to be made like trading that. with rules in the crypto markets. Which is what you're going to design algorithms. So those of you who want to be at iFlip and want to be more passive and use Kelly's strategies, that's going to be an opportunity at the end of the video to get an app that will then be able to uh, introduce you to how this is going to all play forward in the future. Kelly, I have a question on the trading. So we have a lot of people who are probably actively saying, well, I'm going to start. How do I do this? Is there certain platforms that you would you know, recommend or suggest that are better than others when it comes to the trading platforms? I mean, would you use Coinbase? Would you use Binance? Would you use ES? What would you use? Well, I would use Binance if it was me, because Binance at least is looking through a different exchanges to find the best price for you so that the bid offer is generally a little tighter on Binance. Coinbase is efficient, but Coinbase has a reputation of selling their own inventory. And so because of that, the spreads have become more competitive as a result of the emergence of Binance. But believe it or not, the cost of transaction, believe it or not, is marginally a little better on Coinbase these days than mm -hmm. Binance. There is no way everybody just heads up to avoid a commission in a cryptocurrency, including with our platform, that we can build it in and make it more efficient because we can manage that spread of the bid offer. But nonetheless, we go through Binance and Coinbase too to create the liquidity to give people trades. And as a result, we have to pay that same commission as well. So we just pass that on. But at the end of the day, I would, if I didn't have the flip platform to transact, which will be coming, I would probably try and transact on Binance because I trust the bid offer more than I trust the maybe cheaper commission that I can get on Coinbase these days. Awesome. 
Awesome. Great information. Again, those of you that are interested, again, put your uh, comments in the uh, below. We have someone out every day answering the questions, comments. Your comments generate the next video. So stay tuned. Thank you for your interview, Kelly. Anytime, Laurel. So I hope you enjoyed that. I love Kelly. I love his insight and uh, his depth of knowledge. And we're going to stay with him during this journey of watching digital currency not only come into different countries, there are going to be countries, we'll talk about it someday soon, that are going to ban really their entire country from being in digital currency. Let's see how that's going to go over because too many people are moving with this pandemic. And is it going to be a global currency? We're going to talk about that in another interview. If you've enjoyed this and if you love this conversation, because you have to know about money, whether it's digital currency or it's the entities or it's the money making, all these conversations that I have, I know it's a wide conversation, but it's all about money and anything about it. So I want you to subscribe, stay tuned. Who knows what's coming up next? Whatever's new in the market, new in money, we're gonna have it here on my channel. So subscribe, hit the notifications. We're here five days a week. Those of you that were listening, love the interview. I have a gift from Kelly and I. You're gonna click into the description. There's a link for an iFlip app. If you already have it, make sure you like start putting money away. Do it every week, put some money away. Coming soon will be his smart portfolios that you can actually let him do all the work and the AI of that man's amazing genius. And he can do it all for you. Stay safer in your cryptocurrency investing.